Hello, welcome to the course Excelling with Mathematical Modeling. Today we will be talking about scaling, which is again one of the very important aspect of mathematical modeling. So, what is this scaling and why we need this scaling? So, basically you need the scaling to make your dependent and independent variable that appears in your mathematical model to be dimensionless. And why we need that to be dimensionless? Because sometimes you will see that in a mathematical model there are lots of parameters. So, so this scaling they help you to reduce this number of parameters. And also uh, sometimes you face uh, something numerical problems while solving this mathematical models. So, scaling reduces those numerical errors and give you a smooth solution of the numerical methods. So, that is the reason why we go for this scaling in mathematical models. So, as I was telling you it reduces the number of independent and dependent parameters and also it makes the size of the independent and dependent parameters approximately equal to unity. So, for all these reasons scaling is very much recommended for a mathematical model. So, in scaling what we do is that we introduce a dimensional variable dimensionless variable z star which is z minus z0 divided by zc. This z0 mostly we take them as 0. So, all we care that your z and your zc must have the same dimension such that if you divide z divided by zc you get a z star which is a dimensionless quantity. So, let us proceed with an example and it will be very easy to understand uh, the whole process of scaling through an example. So, we take this Bruce Birdworm outbreak model. Please note this lecture is not about the model, but it is about how you can scale a differential equation. The reason we are taking the model so that you can understand the dimensions of various parameters and variables that is appearing in the differential equation. And for that a little background is needed. So, this Bruce Birdworm outbreak model. So, it is an insect, it is which attacks the trees or as you can see pineries, that means the place where the pine trees are grown. So, this insect they attack the leaves of the trees. So, if you see the picture, so this is the insect, and when they attack the trees and eat the leaves, it looks like this. So, basically this insect or Prus birdworm they crawls upon and consume the leaves of the trees and excessive consumption can obviously it kills, uh, it damages the leaves and kills the trees. So, that is why many modelers have studied this, but however this birdworm there is a predation. So, so, many birds eat those worms. And one of such bird is Cape May warbler. So, along with other insects, they also eat these bird worms, which is one of their favorite. So, we have a model where we have a prey, which is the bird worm, and we have a predator, which is this bird. So, the bird worm they prefer larger trees because they have these large leaves, and hence it results in a very large outbreak of population on those pine trees. Now, the figure which you see is as you can see it is a bit whitish, but it is supposed to be greenish. So, the reason is that this all the trees are infested with this insect and hence this is the aerial view of the forest. So, for some unknown reason this birdborne population they just explode and uh, there is a devastating effect devastating effect on the uh, pine trees, but then they return to their manageable levels. But why this management is required? Because of the timber industry. So, the woods comes from these pine trees and there is a huge loss to the timber industry 
and hence various management techniques were tried but without success. So, this problem was studied by many mathematical modelers. Several scientists at the University of British Columbia, the big names are Ludwig, Morris, Jones and Holling. They studied this problem and produce a series of mathematical model. So, this is basically the background of this Bruce Birdworm outweight model. What we will do here is we will take one such model and then I will show you how you can make the whole model dimensionless. So, that is using this process of scaling. So, that is the whole idea. Now, so what you see on the screen is the differential equation that governs this Bruce Bird Birdworm outbreak model. So, this B, this is the density of birdworm at time t. So, the reason this explanation is necessary so that you can understand the dimensions of each of the terms. So, B represents the density. This R is the intrinsic growth rate. For the timing, you remember this is a growth rate. We will come to this intrinsic growth rate in the later lectures. So, growth rate is something per time. So, now you know the dimension of R, that is it will be per time. This K is called the carrying capacity. Now, what do you mean by this carrying capacity? Consider the example say a pond. You have fishes in the pond. So, what do you do is you find that there are say approximately 20 fishes in the pond. So, you buy some fishes, some live fishes say 20 more and you put them in the pond. Fine, after a week again you buy 20 more and you put them in the pond and you repeat that in the next week. But then you see in the coming week some fish, some die, some dead fish, they floats up. So, the meaning is that the pond cannot sustain more than certain number of fish. It can be 100, it can be 150, but beyond that it cannot sustain the number of fish. So, that number is called this carrying capacity. That means, the amount which your environment can sustain. Again, this is density because it will be related with the density of Bruce Budworm. Now, this part is the predation part. By predation part, I mean where the birds eats the insect. In this case, it is Bruce Budworm. Now, beta is the rate at which it is eating the insect. So, it is the density per unit time. So, this beta is called the predation rate and this alpha, it is some saturation constant. Again, this represents a density. So, now you have an idea that what are the terms and what does they represent so that it will be easy when we write the dimension of each of the variables and the parameters. T is obviously the time and this is the initial condition that at time t equal to 0, some initial density of the Bruce birdworm is present. So, we now give a step by step approach to how to non dimensionalize this differential equation. So, step 1, you first identify the variables, the parameters and their dimensions. So, you have the differential equation this, here b is the dependent variable, t is the independent variable, your r, k, alpha and beta, they are the parameters and I need to know what are the dimension of these quantities. We have put it in the tabular form. So, your variable is t and your dimension is capital T. 
B I already told you that is the density. So, mass by volume. So, M L minus 3. You can denote this by rho. Now, the parameters the K R which is the intrinsic growth rate. So, per time K is the carrying capacity already explained that it is the density alpha the saturation factor again the density beta is the predation which is the density per time. So, this is the density m l minus 3 per time t to the power minus 1 and b 0 again the initial density. So, m l minus 3 which is rho. So, you can put this quantity as some rho so that it is easy for simplification otherwise you have to write this whole thing m l minus 3. So, once you have identified all the variables and all the parameters. Now, you have to introduce a new variable using this method of scaling which has no dimension. So, what you do is this is your differential equation. You introduce a variable b equal to u into b star. So, u is the variable which has been introduced which is a dependent variable and you can write u equal to b by b star. Similarly, you introduce t equal to some z into t star. So, z becomes your independent variable. So, that z equal to t by t star. So, here the density of this so, the dimension of this b and of this b star, the dimension of t and of this t star must be same so that your u and z are dimensionless quantities and we will be proving that. So, the next part is you have to substitute these in this differential equation. So, for that we use the chain rule. So, d b d t that is equal to d b d u d u d z and d z d t. So, this is our dependent and independent variables. Now, from here d b d u you can get to be b star from here we keep d u d z as it is and d z d t is 1 by t star. Now, we substitute this in this differential equation and we will be getting b star du dz into 1 by t star equal to r b is replaced by u into b star 1 minus u into b star divided by k minus beta u square b star square divided by alpha square plus u star b star square. Now, next step we choose b star equal to alpha. So, obviously your question will be why we choose this b star equal to alpha, why not it is beta or k or something else. Well, the reason you are choosing this b star equal to alpha is that from this expression you can see that if I choose beta b star equal to alpha, I can take this alpha square common. So, the idea is to make any of one of this term free of a parameter. So, looking at it then you have to decide what is going to be the value of b star. There is no hard and first rule, uh, it will just come with practice. So, if I put b star equal to alpha, then I get d u d z and alpha 1 by t star equal to r u alpha 1 minus u alpha by k minus beta u square 
this is alpha square by alpha square plus mu star square alpha square. Now, 1 alpha is cancelling from here. So, I write du dz is equal to, so I multiply with this t star. So, r t star into u, 1 minus u, I write this as alpha k by alpha minus beta t star u square alpha divided by alpha square 1 plus u square. Now, so our next step I have to put some value of this t star. So, if I simplify this, this is r t star u 1 minus u k by alpha that is minus beta by alpha into t star u square by 1 plus u square. Now, as I told you, the aim is to uh, make one of the term parameter free. So, if I substitute t star equal to alpha by beta, so this is going to cancel and this term will be free of any parameter. So, this will be u square by 1 plus u square only. So, that is why we choose the t star equal to alpha by beta and if you do that, you will get du dz equal to r times this is alpha by beta times u 1 minus u by k by alpha minus beta by alpha t I have chosen alpha by beta u square by 1 plus u square. So, this cancels I have under highlighted this parameter. So, in the next step what we will do is we will write du dz equal to some a times u 1 minus u by b minus u square by 1 plus u square where your a is r alpha by beta and your b is k by alpha. So, now you see the equation which you get of using this method of scaling has two parameters a and b. So, from four parameters it is now reduced to two parameters. The next thing what you have to check is whether the equation which you have just got whether it is a dimensionless or we have some dimension there. That's that part you have to check very carefully. Now, to check the dimension, let us start with u. So, u we have defined as b by b star. So, if I take the dimension of u, it is dimension of b divided by dimension of b star and b is the density. So, it is m l minus 3 b star we have put to be alpha. So, it is the dimension of alpha and as you can see from here the dimension of alpha is again density. So, this is m l minus 3 by m l minus 3 which is 1 a pure number and hence dimension of u is dimensionless basically. Let us now take t. sorry, uh, let us now take z. So, z is t by t star. So, dimension of z is dimension of t divided by dimension of t star and this will be equal to, so dimension of t as you can see from here it is capital T and t star we have taken that to be alpha by beta which means dimension of alpha by dimension of beta. 
Now dimension of alpha. So alpha is just the density. So instead of m l minus 3, I am now putting this rho and dimension of beta which is the density per time. So it is rho t minus 1. This cancels, this goes up and gives you 1. So again z is your dimensionless quantity. So the variables which you have introduced u and z, you have now proved that they are dimensionless. Now let us take the parameters. You have the parameter a which is r alpha by beta. So dimension of A is dimension of this whole quantity which is dimension of R by dimension of alpha by dimension of beta. Now dimension of R it is per time so T minus 1 dimension of alpha it is m L minus 3 and dimension of beta it is density per time so m L minus 3 t to the power minus 1 and this cancels and gives you 1. So your A is again dimensionless. Our second parameter B which is equal to k by alpha. So dimension of B is dimension of k by alpha which is dimension of k by dimension of alpha and dimension of k is the density dimension of alpha is again density, they are cancelling and 1. So now you have proved that the equation which you got after scaling, whether it is the variables or whether it is the parameters, they are all dimensionless. So now let us look into the initial condition. So what happens to the initial condition? So the initial condition is given to be B0 equal to some b0. Now if I substitute because your b equal to u into b star, so your b0 is going to be u0 into b star because they are functions of t. So here it is u0 into b star that is equal to b0. So your u0 which is your initial condition now which is b0 divided by b star. Now b0 is the density because it is initial value from here. So it is m l minus 3 if I take the dimension and your b star is alpha and dimension of alpha is again the density. So m l minus 3 by m l minus 3 and it is 1. So your initial condition is again also dimensionless. So you get your equation of the form d u d z equal to a times u 1 minus u by b minus u square by 1 plus u square with your u0 equal to say gamma. So I take this expression to be gamma. So this is now your differential equation of the given model which is now dimensionless. Now the question is that whether this is the unique one or we can have a separate one also. So as I told you there is no hard and first rule of choosing the values of this B star and T star. So if you want an alternative method, so let us uh, see if we can find any alternative method of this uh, alternative values of this B star and T star so that we can get a different uh, dimensionless equation of the same uh, model. So what do you do is we rewrite uh, the equation. So you have when you have substituted b equal to u times b star and t 
equal to some z times t star. You substituted in the original equation and you got the resulting equation to be du dz that is equal to r t star u 1 minus u p star by k minus beta times b star t star u square divided by alpha square plus beta star square u square. Now, in the previous one we took that beta star should be equal to alpha. But let us now look into this equation. If I take beta star equal to k instead of beta star equal to alpha, then what we will get? We will get du dz equal to r t star u 1 minus, so u times k by k, it will cancel and minus beta k t star u square divided by alpha square plus k square u square. So, this part is free from any parameter. Now, if I choose my t star to be 1 by r, then this will cancel and this whole term will be free of any parameter. So, you can see that that is how it works. You have to first put some value of this dependent variable or even independent variable and then decide what will be the value of the other uh, variables. So, if I simplify here, I will get du dz equal to u times 1 minus u minus beta k 1 by r u square divided by alpha square plus k square u square. So, this is what you get once you put this uh, beta star equal to k. Now, I will do a little simplification here. So, I will write this as u 1 minus u. I will take this k square common. So, a bit simplification and you will get beta by k r u square by alpha square by k square plus u square. So, if I take this k square that k square is going to cancel with this k and you are going to get beta by k r and this side will be u square by u square plus alpha square plus k square. Now, this part I can substitute as some capital A and this part I can substitute as some capital B and I get du dz equal to u into 1 minus u some a times u square plus u square plus b square where the a is beta by kr and your b is alpha square by k square. Now, so you got another equation where a first part is free of parameters. Again, instead of four parameters, you have two parameters. What you have to check is whether they are dimensionless or not. So, already we have checked that your u and z are dimensionless. Now, you have to check whether your a and b are dimensionless or not. So, if I take the dimension of a, this will be dimension of beta divided by dimension of k and dimension of r. So, as you can see dimension of beta from here, it is the density that is m l minus 3 per time. Dimension of k is only density, so m l minus 3 and dimension of r is per time. So, t minus 1, both are identical, they cancels and a is a dimensionless quantity because this is a pure number. In the similar manner, if I take the dimension of b, it is dimension of alpha by dimension of k. So, b is sorry, this is alpha by k 
and this is equal to dimension of alpha is again density ml minus 3, dimension of k again then density ml minus 3 and a pure number hence b is also dimensionless. So, you get an equation where uh, an alternate equation uh, through scaling where your parameters capital A and capital B is again dimensionless. So, as you can see that this uh, transformation using this scaling is not unique. You can choose uh, various values such that you get the differential equation to be dimensionless and it is in the hand of the modeler which, which uh, differential equation he or she will take that will facilitate uh, your modeling process. And for this obviously, if you can consider the initial condition that is B0 equal to this, this is again uh, already proved that this is dimensionless. So, you have your differential equation of the form du dz equal to u into 1 minus u minus a u square divided by u square plus b square with the initial condition that u 0 is equal to some gamma. So, that is how uh, the scaling helps you in reducing the number of parameters in a particular model. So, we end our lecture with this and in the next lecture, we will be talking about how to build a mathematical model or how to create a mathematical model from the scratch. Till then, bye-bye.